Okay, we're in chapter one still on ingredients of change, functions and limits. So this is section 1.3 on limits and continuity. So the use of limits to describe changes sets calculus, whether it's business calculus or the strict um, normal calculus, apart from algebra. Okay, so that's really what sets us apart from algebra. Now, it describes in behavior of a function as well as behavior of output as input value approaches a specific value. Okay, so horizontal asymptotes, basically the output goes to a specific number. So if we look here on our graph, a horizontal, out, or a horizontal asymptote would be basically our, uh, y equals zero because at that point we can see that you know this goes down and it approaches that zero but it never reaches. This one as we approach negative x infinity, negative infinity for x, we approach zero but we never reach it. And so basically as x approaches infinity and as as x approaches negative infinity, uh, in this case, the limit of f of x as you know, each case plus and minus infinity, they both go to zero. And that's gonna be our horizontal asymptote. Now functions with unbounded output, so basically they go you know, to positive or negative infinity. Um, again, it goes to infinity, whether it's negative or positive, depends on which way it goes. So as like in this case, as x approaches one from the left, and we say from the left with a one and then a negative up here. And if we approach it from the right, we're gonna say it's a one to the plus, okay? And so as we're approaching the one, x equals one from the left, what happens is we're going to go to negative infinity. And as we approach from the right going to one, we'll go this way, well, we're gonna to go to positive infinity. And so that's what we're saying here. So we're taking the limb of f of x as x approaches one from the left, that goes to negative infinity. And as x approaches one from the right, the one plus, we're saying the limb of f of x as x approaches one from the right, that goes to positive infinity. And so we just kind of are looking at the end behaviors and uh, how the function uh, works in the middle even, and so we can describe that with limits. Now that vertical asymptote, that's where there's a x equals c, that's the limit of the function as x approaches c is said to uh, not exist, okay? So here, you know, we can't have x equaling one based on this, and so in this case, the limit of f of x as x approaches one does not exist because here we're going to negative infinity, here we're going to positive infinity, and because those are not equal, this one doesn't have a limit. Now, if they both came in and said gone to negative infinity or both to positive infinity or both going to one or whatever, then we would have a limit. But because they go to opposite ends, we don't have a limit existing. <clears throat> All right, so what we were looking at there was left-hand and right-hand limits. So reading this out, we have a function f defined on an interval containing a constant c, except possibly at c itself. And as you can see, we didn't, we didn't have a limit there. Um, if f of x approaches the number l1 as x approaches c from the left, so you know as x approaches c from the left, in this case, we went to l1 of negative infinity. Now, then the left-hand limit of L1 is written as this, and that's kind of what we just saw. We said the limit of f of x as x approaches uh, one from the left was equal to negative infinity. Now, similarly, if f of x approaches the number L2 uh, as x approaches c from the right, then the right-hand limit of f is L2, and it's written as, you know, the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right is L2. And in our case, the L2 was positive infinity because it approached that from the right, whereas from the left it went to negative infinity. So let's look at some examples based on, on this graph over here. So what we want to do is graphically estimate the values for the function f. So we want to find the limb of f of x as x approaches 6 from the left, okay? So here's 6, x equals 6, and so we're approaching it from the left, so we're coming this way, well, it's gonna go down to negative infinity. Okay, so the closer we get to the six on the left side, we're going to negative infinity. Now, as we approach uh, six from the right, we're taking the limit of f of x as x approaches six from the right. Well, here we're going down, 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 and we're approaching six. Well, that's gonna be at negative one, okay? 
Now, another point on the graph we can look at is that zero, because we notice that we have a disconnect here. It's, it's not actually equal to zero here. And the other disconnect was this vertical asymptote. So, you know, we, we don't ever approach it with, we get close, but we never actually get to it with uh, approaching from the left. Approaching from the right, we get and actually hit that negative one. And so that was one case. Now this is gonna be the other case. And so as we approach zero from the left, well, that means we're gonna go this way we get to negative one. Now, as we approach zero from the right, so now we're coming this way, well, we get to negative one again. So that's kind of how we can use a graph to determine, you know, the limits approaching from the left or from the right. And in this case, two different numbers on the same graph we can look at. Now we can also estimate the value for the function of f of six and f of zero. Well, what is f of six? Well, f of six is negative one. And f of zero, well f of zero, that doesn't exist. There's no point here. So that one is, does not exist. Okay, now if that actually had been a filled in circle, then the limit would be that actual number there, you know, the negative one. But because it doesn't exist, because we have that open circle. All right, so I'm gonna pause and do another section in a little bit.